Hello everyone, my name is Xuan Wang, Senior Software Engineer from Huawei. I'm a full-time open source contributor and have worked on open source since for more than seven years. I mainly work in open infra community before and was a maintainer in OpenStack Keystone project. Now uh, I mainly work on AI related open source things. Uh, I'm very happy to speak at Open Source Summit Europe. Uh, hope this topic can help you more or less. Thank you. Today our session will be splitted three parts. First, we will give a brief introduction about Spark and uh, deep learning on Spark. Then Xu Yuan will give an overview and technical detail about how to support the Onyx and uh, isn't on Onyx right time. Finally, after above two parts completed, we will give a who workflows to help you understand and show how to run Onyx AI inference job on Apache Spark. Okay, let's start. We will first give a brief introduction about a Spark. What's a Spark? Maybe you, you already have a preliminary understanding of Apache Spark. We can look at the picture on left surf first uh, with a very simple line of a code. We can use the API of Spark data frame to complete the processing of a big data. Behind the sim simplicity, Spark helped us convert the simple code into Spark program that can run in a distributed environmental. Uh, this environmental contains many, many worker and uh, physical node or container, uh, anything. Yeah. When a user submits a Spark job, the Spark driver will request multi-workers from the resource management component. This, mm, as we know, this resource management uh, component can be Yarn or Kubernetes. Yeah, they are very popular resource management component. And then Spark will help us segment the data. Yeah, just uh, split the big data to very small size, and then shuffle the, the, the uh, uh, transfer the data to each worker, and let the uh, transporting executor handle their transporting task. Uh, that means uh, a very small task to uh, re uh, do something like map reduce. The, 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 the data or something. Yeah, the executor is where the real data is processed, including the data conversion, uh, some transform, uh, aggregation, drawing, or other operations. When the start is processed, it can be written to the transporting file or returned to the user for uh, further use. So it is precisely because of the simple API and the power functions of uh, Spark. So Spark is the most computer, most uh, important component in the field of the big data processing. As we all know, Python is a very important language for AI, especially when the data ecology and the AI ecology are integrated. So yeah, the process of training an AI model, we need to prepare a large amount of uh, data priority processing is involved, such as feature engineering and uh, data washing. Uh, so par uh, Spark also provides the PySpark. Uh, this is a very important role to connect the data and AI through our PySpark. Uh, for example, on the left picture, you can see Spark as a base and uh, Spark core as a base, which is written by Scala. And PySpark is an interface for Apache Spark in Python. It not only allows you to write a Spark application using Python API, but also provides the uh, like PySpark shell for uh, interactive understanding your data in a distributed environmental. Um, Python <coughs> supports most of uh, Spark features such as the Spark Circle, the data frame, streaming, ML Live, um, um, and a Spark Core. So you can see the, the, the right right part. Um, you can easily to install the PySpark using PIP. 
and、uh, then and you just type the PySpark. You can、uh, start a PySpark shell、uh, and use a very simple API to read the JSON and、uh, analyze、uh, the JSON JSON file. So this is a picture is a data flow in PySpark. PySpark is built on the top of a Spark Java API,、uh, and the data is processed in Python and、uh, catch a shuffle in the JVM. So you can see the left picture, Py、um, Py4j, Py4 Py4 Java is a very、uh, very important bridge of the Spark and PySpark. I would say it's a bridge of the Java and the Python. So you need the PyCo and the PyCo the 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 data object、um, between the Python and the Java.、Uh, so the most important things is how to transfer the data between the Py Python and Spark. Okay, after we have、uh, some introduction、um, about the PySpark, then we will,、uh, I will introduce、uh, the the history release of the Spark. How to improve the ML or data and AI? Yeah, Apache <coughs> uh, Spark have also have a lots of improvement to help data and AI integration in the past releases. Uh, so just like uh, Spark two four three seven four is a、um, named as a barrier execution mode. Uh, one of the reason is uh, to support the deep deep learning framework on Spark. So the core of this P S P I P helps the、uh, task level gun schedule, or to say one or nothing.、Uh, that means, uh, um, such as uh, as a task、uh, are dependent on each other. Um,、uh, when one of the task are、uh, failed, so all tasks、uh, are are retired. So this is uh, just uh, one or not、uh, one or nothing means. Um,、uh, not that this is uh, uh the task level gun schedule, not the.、Uh, The resource management gun scheduler. Yeah.、And、for example, Hoverboard is a open source framework to do the deep learning on scale by 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 over.、Um, Uses the、uh, MPI to implement、uh, implement implement the、uh, distributed deep learning for various DDL frameworks. After this, the feature supported, and we can、um, uh, easily to do do this things. Like like the horror world work, so uh this is a、uh, help to the、uh, distributed training, um, and the second one is the、uh, accelerator of VR scheduling, yeah, the the core feature of this IPAP helps to discover GPU hardware integrated into the Spark. You can easily integrate your specific GPU hardware. Also, you know, user can define the discover script, and meanwhile, the, this、uh, SPF also provide a way to request GPU in application and help the task scheduling in GPU environment. So this feature is a very,、uh, very, very good SPF to help user、um, do the GPU integration and they help the uh, uh, discover the GPU. Yeah, and the second one is to help with、uh, uh, schedule an、uh, application to、uh, a environment with GPU. Yeah. So the last one is the optimized、uh, data exchange.、Uh, as I mentioned before, the data exchange is very important things for Spark and PySpark, and also it's very important to speed data change between the、uh, PySpark and other frameworks such as uh, uh, deep learning. So we can say that, uh, uh, it's a very important one is、uh, error integration. Error is a, a very important project to help memory share, memory transfer, uh, something like a data exchange between the process or、uh, components. So this, uh, uh, the second, uh, the last one is、uh, just for this. Uh, it uh, introduces a Spark three word. Um, we can say that three uh, have been uh, the the history of uh, uh, Spark have many many improvement in uh, uh, help the data and AI integration. So what else can we continue to do and help the integration of the Spark and the AI framework? Okay, let's see this page. This page shows the simple simplest、uh, workflow of the 
inference workflow of the data and AI pipeline. In general, the user uses Spark as a data processing platform and uses uh, Onyx Runtime as an infer uh, inference platform. So just an example, uh, Onyx Runtime is, is one of the DL uh, inference platform. Yeah. Uh, so the well-defined uh, data frame interface is very friendly to data engineering. The data engineering can easy to load data and uh, complete the feature engineer like the ETL or something. Uh, they, they, they are very um, proficient uh, in the data processing. As a, a de facto standard of a big data platform, Spark can help users uh, easily and conveniently uh, use a simple interface to uh, divide a huge data to each executor. Uh, that just like uh, I'm, I introduced before. So especially in recent years, Spark has enabled the Pandas on Spark uh, API since uh, version 3.4, which is very important convenient to users who uh, who, who will use the uh, Pandas API. You can easily to uh, migrate your Pandas application to um, Pandas on Spark um, with no 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 more line change. Uh, you can just move the uh, the pandas from the single machine to the uh, distributed environment. So as a present, uh, uh, meanwhile, yeah, as we know, the various AI frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, Manspar, uh, has their own implementations. So for 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 developers who use the AI framework, they are often proficient to the um, such as a parameter tuning of the AI framework and the internal principle of the uh, frameworks. But uh, uh, just to say there's uh, two parts, uh, two roles in here. It's a uh, data engineers and uh, ML or production engineers. So there are some gaps uh, of uh, fraction points between these two. Uh, because the data engineering often don't understand the framework very deeply. Uh, they, they, they don't know the, the internal of the uh, various frameworks. And uh, uh, same as the uh, AI engineer, they also uh, didn't, uh, don't know much about the data, data, data engineers so, or uh, the, the work or some integration work. Therefore, the Spark community has also initialized a discussion on SAPIP, uh, help, uh, hoping to hide the complex process of each framework by providing a simple API, uh, make the process of the Spark and AI inference smoother. Uh, smoother. Uh, so the, the goal of this SPIP is to simplify the deployment of the DL models to Spark inference. Uh, enable and also enable the integration with uh, third-party DL framework. Naturally, the part, uh, the target um, person, uh, uh, data engineer who need to deploy DL on Spark, uh, or the developers who want to de uh, deploy the DL models on Spark. You can see, uh, you can search the Spark uh, uh, 38648 to learn more. Um, but uh, I, I just want to say this SPF is still under discussion, maybe not uh, uh, complete integration, just uh, introduce some uh, simple API in, in PySpark. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, help uh, the, the data and the engineering and the AI engineering to integrate smoother. So first of all, I'd like to introduce the basic concept of Onyx for you. Onyx is an open source project managed under Linux Foundation AI and Data. And we call it LF AI and Data. It is an umbrella foundation of the Linux Foundation that supports open source invocations in artificial intelligence and data. The mission of LFAI and Data is to build and support an open artificial intelligence and data community and drive an open source invocation in the AI and data domains by enabling corporations and the creation of new opportunities for all the members of the community. 
Mm, Onyx is an open format built to represent machine learning models. Onyx defines a common set of operators, the building blocks of machine learning and deep learning models, and a common field format to enable AI developers to use models with a variety of frameworks, tools, runtimes, and uh, compilers. In using Onyx, you can develop in your preferred framework without worrying about uh, downstream um, inferencing uh, impl implications. Onyx enables you to use your um, preferred framework with your chosen uh, inference engine. And what's more, Onyx makes it easier to access hardware optimizations and use Onyx compatible runtimes and libraries designed to uh, maximize performance across hardware. And Onyx runtime is a cross-platform machine learning model accelerator uh, with a flexible interface to integrate hardware specific libraries. Um, and uh, it, is, uh, op it is an open source project from Microsoft. Um, let's look at the flow at the right side um, in the slide. It shows how users work with Onyx and Onyx, Onyx Runtime. First, users uh, should fetch uh, pre-trained models in any format. For example, it could be the PyTorch, uh, models, TensorFlow models, and so on. Then users need to transform the models to Onyx format uh, using the transform tools provided by the Onyx community or any other AI framework. Next, user can load the Onyx format model into Onyx Runtime. Then the models can run on any hardware that Onyx Runtime supports. We can see that uh, uh, there are many, many AI frameworks and hardware now support Onyx and Onyx Runtime. Next, I'd like to introduce the basic concept of Ascend. Ascend is the name of NPU AI processors from Huawei. Around it, Huawei has built the Ascend AI ecosystem. So let's take a look at the graph here. The red, the red rectangles here represent different Ascend uh, processor models. Ascend 310 only supports AI inference and both 710 and 910 support train and uh, inference. Based on the processor, Huawei built a series of AI-related hardwares, which shown in blue rectangles in the picture. They are called Atlas. Here, I'd like to say more about uh, Atlas 3000. It's a kind of PCI card and used widely on data or AI process servers. Our develop and test work in this section is based on it as well. Then, um, based on the hardware, Ascend ecosystem also provides a software layer called CAN, C -A -N -N. It's the yellow rectangles in the picture. CAN provides APIs to help developers quickly build AI applications and services based on the Ascend platform. Mm, frankly speaking, it's similar with um, CUDA in NVIDIA ecosystem. And uh, then at last, uh, based on CAN, it's the user layer. Any AI-related apps, frameworks, and uh, other applications um, can use can easily um, va. Um, uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Any AI uh, 
related apps, frameworks, and so on can use uh, Ascend easily via CAN. First, uh, for software, CAN is the main point that uh, both developer and AI framework should know. So let's focus on CAN. And you can see in this, uh, and this is the CAN technical stack view in Ascend ecosystem. The picture here shows the newest version called CAN 5.0. As you can see, there are multiple layers in CAN. It contains uh, service layer, compilation layer, execution layer, and the base layer. So the uh, service layer um, contains uh, operator library, optimization engine, and the framework adapter. Um, operator library uh, names AOL is a neural network library and contains a computer vision library and the BLAST library and more included. Uh, so for AOE, um, it's Ascend optim Optimization Engine. Um, it mainly sp speeds up the end-to-end -end execution of models through operator auto turn and uh, SGAT and another te technique. And for framework adapter, uh, it's mainly to uh, address the, the AI framework. And then for computing uh, compilation layer, um, it mainly contains ATC. ATC is Tensor compa Compiler. It's a graph compiler, uh, the control center of graph building and uh, execution, and it can be used for man man management of graph runtime environment, graph execution engine, operator packages, subgraph turning, and graph op operations. And the TB here uh, is tensor boost engine. Uh, it uh, uh, enables auto scheduler and operator buildings. And the next layer, um, execution layer ACE, is the main point. Uh, ACE ex executes models and operators, sched schedule tasks, and manage compute units. It includes runtime, graph executor, um, digital vision pre-processing and AI pre-processing and Huawei uh, collectives communication libraries. And the last layer is the base layer. Um, there's, I think there's no more things to say because it's the uh, uh, contents of the basic base OS, SVM and others. After the Ascend introduction, let's fall back to Onyx. And currently, if a user wants to run Onyx model on Ascend hardware, he should first use the model translations translation tool provided by Khan to translate the model from Onyx to Ascend. The flow is a little complex, and the translated model may lose some precision and the performance may be poor. Even in some case, the model may cannot work correctly. So to solve the problem, a better way is to find a way that Onyx model can work on Ascent directly. Onyx Runtime has a machine to support different hardware. It is called Execution Provider. So in Onyx Runtime, we'd like to add a, add a CAN as a new Execution Provider. Once it is done, Users can use Onyx model on Ascend hardware via Onyx Runtime. Of course, we will add the related CI system in, us, in upstream as well to make sure the current execution provider can always work. The line below is, the, is our roadmap. First, we will push the basic code to upstream. The end-to-end -end flow will be done in it and the 
ResNet model should work correctly on CAN execution provider. And at, and at the end of this year, we'll finish all the Onyx operator support and make sure all the models in Onyx model zoo can work well on Ascend. In the next year, we'll focus on op optimization work, like uh, such as performance improvement and so on. And now the patch for CAN support is done. And use the code shown here, and the, the link shown here. You can now run ResNet and VGG models correctly on CAN using on Onyx Runtime directly. And if you are interested, please leave us a message and we can discuss more in the future. Maybe we can provide ascend resources for you to test temporarily. Okay, that's all for my share. Next, Equin uh, um, will um, share the full stack um, about uh, how Spark um, and Onyx and can, can work together. This is a simple example to show how the developer should complete the inference after DL on Spark enabled. We can see uh, see the lab fired. Uh, the only things the users need to do is to import the consulting uh, framework extension and the model URL. Uh, then all complexity, including the type processing, type conversion, and the framework initialization are hidden in the model user defined function. Uh, this model UDF maybe uh, will be uh, supported or implemented by the airframe provider. And uh, uh, what uh, each framework needs to do is just uh, to implement the transporting implementation according to the actual situation of the framework, just like uh, the PyTorch or TensorFlow. Then see the right picture. A Spark will help you execute the Onyx info running in Spark Ecoder, and the Spark will help gather the final result. Uh, in this, by this way, users can easily complete the Onyx inference on big data and help the uh, split data and the uh, inference the the, uh, the, the, the the AI AI results in. Uh, uh, hardware with, hard, with, with different hardware in Spark Ecuter. At the same time, since uh, Onyx is used uh, uh, as a framework for model inference in the Ecuter, all hardware supported by Onyx Runtime can fully uh, ultralized. Okay, thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for your watching. Uh, that's all our shares. Thank you.